Ladies and gentlemen, China has just become an even bigger threat to the U.S. China's Navy is larger than the U.S. And the stories are out and you can clearly see, you know, tomorrow's superpower, China's naval buildup could oust U.S. from Pacific. future U.S. versus China naval sizes. So it, it's getting to them. You can always tell when these stories are getting to the U.S. because now you're seeing a flood. China's Navy, just how dangerous. And ladies and gentlemen, there's many things going on now. You know how China has been in Africa building up the infrastructure now the U.S. is trying to get some deal to build a super highway in Africa. You see, they know they're getting shoved to the side. China is squeezing them out everywhere. And the South Pacific is also going to be one of those locations where the U.S. gets squeezed right on out. They're going to squeeze them out. They're going to get uh, squeezed out of Africa. And see, they didn't gave all of their businesses and labor over to China. So China has been able to build an economy that is so large, it can give the U.S. a run for their money. You know, they let their enemies provide the labor to their businesses while their people at home are losing their jobs or have lost jobs and have not been able to bounce back from all of the jobs leaving out of here. I knew it was gonna be a problem, even over a decade when I was hearing about all the jobs leaving, I knew it was gonna be a problem. But you know, you have all of these high IQ people that never seem to be able to see the future ahead of them. They're totally blind to everything. So China, has been doing a lot of things behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen. You ever wonder why the U.S. sanctions are no longer strong? It's because every time the U.S. throws sanctions on someone, China goes right behind them and say, hey, whatever the U.S. don't give you, we'll give it to you. We'll give you the loans that the U.S. won't give you. <laughs> we'll provide anything that the U.S. is trying to throw sanctions on you against. And this is why they have not been able to topple North Korea, because every time they put sanctions, the U.S. put sanctions on North Korea, China comes right behind them and give them loans and money and more business deals. <laughs> so all of those sanctions the U.S. is putting on them is a waste of time. So let's get into this article. Tomorrow's superpower, China's naval buildup could oust U.S. from Pacific. I'm going to go ahead and play the audio to this. Tomorrow's superpower, China's naval buildup could oust U.S. from Pacific. Written by Selwyn Duke, Wednesday, August 29, 2018. If a movie scene could epitomize the situation between the United States and China, it might be the introduction of villainous boxer Clubber Lang in Rocky III. Lang is seen training hard, playing for keeps in the ring, and putting his nose to the grindstone, driven by burning ambition. Scenes of world champ Rocky Balboa are interposed, showing him slacking off, distracted by fun and frivolity, oblivious to the burgeoning threat that could knock him into oblivion. No, China isn't ready to club us into unconsciousness just yet, but it, well, does have the eye of the dragon. In fact, addressing a rapid naval buildup that threatens to oust the United States from the Pacific, a top American admiral wrote earlier this year that there is no guarantee that the United States would win a future conflict with China, and China's military rise is striking. 
The nation just launched its first domestically built aircraft carrier, giving it two now, with a third under construction. Analysts cited by the New York Times say the nation will ultimately construct five or six. Overall, China already has a larger naval force than does the United States, with 317 warships and submarines in active service, compared with 283 in the U.S. Navy, reports the Times. The paper further informs, the Chinese Navy, officially the People's Liberation Army Navy, has built more than 100 warships and submarines in the last decade alone, more than the entire naval fleets of all but a handful of nations. In 1995, China had only three submarines. It now has nearly 60 and plans to expand to nearly 80, and while our fleet is still superior qualitatively, this could change, especially since China has long been stealing our military technology. As to these technological leaps, the Times tells us, last year, China also introduced the first of a new class of heavy cruisers, or super destroyers, that, according to the U.S. Office of Naval Intelligence, are comparable in many respects to most modern Western warships. Two more were launched from dry dock in Dalian in July, the state media reported. In fact, Admiral Philip Davidson, the new commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, expressed in March that China is now capable of controlling the South China Sea in all scenarios short of war with the United States, reports the Times. Moreover, he described China as a peer competitor, gaining on the United States not by matching its forces weapon by weapon but by building critical, asymmetrical capabilities, including with anti-ship missiles and in submarine warfare. There is no guarantee that the United States would win a future conflict with China, he concluded, the Times continued. Most troubling is the following, also courtesy of the Times. A centerpiece of this asymmetrical strategy is an arsenal of high-speed ballistic missiles designed to strike moving ships. The latest versions, the DF-21D and, since 2016, the DF-26, are popularly known as carrier killers, since they can threaten the most powerful vessels in the U.S. fleet long before they get close to China. The DF-26, which made its debut in a military parade in Beijing in 2015 and was tested in the Bohai Sea last year, has a range that would allow it to menace ships and bases as far away as Guam, according to the latest Pentagon report on the Chinese military, released this month. These missiles are almost impossible to detect and intercept, and are directed at moving targets by an increasingly sophisticated Chinese network of radar and satellites. Such missiles pose a particular challenge to U.S. commanders because neutralizing them might require an attack deep inside Chinese territory, which would be a major escalation. Of course, China can't yet defeat the United States in an all-out global war. But it has possibly reached a point where it can defend its interests in the South China Sea, as intervention there may now, or soon, be too costly for the United States to contemplate. Reflecting China's grand ambitions, these interests include artificial islands constructed to enable the nation to lay claim to international waters, yet this isn't the only way it projects power beyond its borders. There's also the soft power of Chinese infiltration of our schools, influence over entertainment, and buying of influence, part of which I wrote about on Monday. To truly understand the picture this paints, to grasp the threat posed by China, we must consider the culture's mentality, know thy enemy. The Chinese are very prideful, losing face is a serious matter to them. And they believe that such humiliation is precisely what they've endured due to domination by the Western powers in Japan. China has a chip on its shoulder the size of, well, China, and the nation wants a measure of vengeance. This is exacerbated by another aspect of the Chinese mentality, one now foreign to us. Western pseudo-elites have been overcome by the tabula rasa theory of man, cultural relativism, and, related to this, internationalism. In this way of thinking, since all people are basically the same, borders aren't an expression of the principle good fences make good neighbors, but are artificial barriers serving as an impediment to our becoming a one-world community. We're all just citizens of the earth, you see. The Chinese mentality reflects man's historical default. They view their culture and race as superior and, many suspect, believe this grants them the right to dominate the world. They view our primacy as a quirk of history attributable only to our mastery of the arts of war, and this sticks in their craw. What they view as the natural order must be re-established. To understand an advantage associated with this, consider why China, one of the world's oldest civilizations, is still around while the Roman Empire disappeared. The latter at its height was unrivaled in power, but it was a conglomeration of disparate peoples, a multicultural entity, bound together by nothing but Rome's power. When that power diminished the empire dissolved. 
In contrast, while China has seen difficult times and disaster, governments come and go, three things have remained throughout the Chinese people, culture, and language. China is a true nation, meaning an extension of the tribe, which itself is an extension of the family. This brings us to us. Are we becoming more like a nation, one people unified? Or are we become more like the Roman Empire, balkanized and bound together only by law and might? Not only are we fracturing ourselves demographically and culturally via unwise immigration policies, we're also fracturing ideologically and exhibiting immaturity. China is trying to figure out how to dominate the world. We are trying to figure out how many genders there are. We're busy conjuring up new rights for an alphabet soup of identities. China supposes might makes right. We're eating ourselves alive and de-westernizing the West with multiculturalism. China is enforcing one culture and seeks to spread it the world over. Put simply, we're busy fighting ourselves, China's preparing to fight us. The prospect of China as global hegemon should give the United States and the world pause. The nation plans to have 600 million surveillance cameras in place by 2020 to monitor its people Big Brother style. It uses the information collected to, as the government puts it, purify society, that is, to determine how much each citizen conforms to state ideology and then assign rights, privileges, and punishments accordingly. Consequently, some Chinese aren't permitted to fly, board trains, get loans, or send their children to private school. Clearly, Beijing thinks Orwell's 1984 is a how-to manual. Now, do you want to bet your children's future that China wouldn't impose this on the whole world if it could? The Rocky character's problem in Rocky III was that he lost his fire, his mentality was all wrong. China right now has the eye of the dragon. If we don't get our eye back on what really matters, our loss of the world title may not only involve a knockout, it may be permanent. Subscribe to The New American and listen to more by clicking podcast on the top right corner of our homepage. Also, please consider donating to help us push out more content for you, our listeners. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. China, like he said, they're preparing to take world domination. And the U.S., on a social scale, has never been strong. You know, when you got all this stuff going on and pitting yourself against other people and racism and sexism and police brutality, you don't have a united nation. You don't. Never had that. You know, what you have is a country that looks strong on the outside, but from within, America is very weak. It's weak when it comes down to social issues. And it's weak on fixing problems in this country that have gone on for centuries. They just try to, their thing is ignore it and let's just move on. And you can clearly see it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Are they going to fix it? No. You can't expect a psychopath to fix what's wrong. These folks are psychotic. And that's why everything goes unfixed. But please tell me what you think about this big naval buildup that China is doing. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I will see you on the next video. Peace, family.